Thank you very much indeed. Kill to Get Crimson, that's the title of his new album. And in a moment, Mark Knopfler will be telling me all about it. First, here's a bit of his new single. Mark Knopfler there with uh, True Love Will Never Fade. I mean, you probably guess that from that, <laughs> that selection. What's that, what's <laughs> yeah. that? Welcome to you. What, what's that all Thank about? Thank you. Um, what is that all about? W where do songs come from? I, I'm not altogether sure, and if I was, I probably wouldn't write them. Well, you don't have sort of favourite places you go for inspiration, you know, long walks or books or anything like that? No, I mean, some, I can get songs from books, uh, but I can, I can just as easily get it from, um, yes, from a cafe, or I could get it from yeah. chatting yeah. to you. But is there always, a, you know, when you look back at it, a moment that you, you, you kind of associate that song coming from that moment? Yes, in fact, that one c comes from um, uh, just reading something about, uh, about the tattoo, the history of tattoo as well. And I think from the point of view of female tattoo, it's quite interesting that times have changed. It used to be that guys would wear that this was my ship or this was my yeah. but and the and the female tattoo was a more secretive thing but now it's come more into the open where do you stand on tattoos you got yeah? oh well do you no i don't i'm not i'm not in favor of tattoos. no i'm not into i'm not personally into tattoos um, yeah. at all no i'm I, and your children I'm, would you be upset but if I, they got I would tattoos? be i absolutely would be and i've spoken about it why why well because i just don't want it to happen and i like them to know where i stand on that what is Kill to Get Crimson? That sounds like a reference to blood. No, it's actually a reference to paint. Um, it, it's one of my characters who's a painter, and he says to a young guy who wants to be a painter, he said, you don't understand that I don't have a choice about this. I'd kill to get crimson on this palette knife, is what he says. And it's something about compulsion, the compulsion to paint in his case. And maybe for me, I don't know, but there's a compulsion to write songs. Hmm. And when I was a kid, I, I would have killed to have had a crimson guitar. Really? I, yeah, you, you saved up, but you didn't, you, you, like so many children, you didn't quite get the one you were after. No, it? that's right. My dad couldn't afford the, the one that I wanted, but I got an imitation one that was about a third of the price, uh, uh, which I loved, and uh, learned to play on it. And has that turned you into a uh, compulsive guitar collector ever since? Yes, I, I think you've got to be slightly obsessive, unfortunately, to... Um... So how many have you got? Go on. Oh, no, it's not... Well, I've never counted them, but it's not... I didn't become a collector. It, it really started with just people giving me guitars, and, um, and um, it, that still happens. And, of course, there are different kinds. There's electric ones and acoustic ones, and there are ones with F holes and ones with sound holes, and there are ones with lots of pickups and ones with one pickup, and so on and so forth. They do different things. I mean, it's a bit like um, sort of footballers and kit sponsorship, isn't it? I mean, I was interviewing a singer, and she could only appear in front of a Steinway piano. You know, oh, right. Are, are you kind of bought up by, by Fender? Or can no, I mean, I do have signature models, but that's really more for the thrill of, of having them. It's um, something that you associate with childhood. And, but having a signature model from a manufacturer is a, is a very is a thrilling thing for a guitar player, I suppose. But yeah. I have a couple of, actually, a couple of manufacturers and, who make them. And that actually gives you a chance to try things out, presumably. With it it does, does, too, and it keeps you in touch. Anything that keeps the muscles working. Now, I was reading about you, talking of muscles, that you're known as, a, I think, a finger picker is the technical phrase, but, but not always. Not always, no. I've also got the, the, these little plastic plectrum things usually yeah. in my pocket, and, and that's how I started, yeah. learning to play like that, and I've always loved doing that too. And, and you, have to, you, have to, you have to think in a different way when you play mm -hmm. different ways because the vibrato changes. Yeah. I mean, does it, does it, have you got sort of steely fingertips from all those years of, of plucking very Yeah, I mean, they're actually deadly weapons. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Now, I, also, you've been involved with Darfur Day. Uh, a little, yeah. The, the, uh, a civil, young civil rights lawyer called uh, Jason McHugh approached me about this um, uh, quite a long time ago, in fact. And um, uh, it's not so much a political uh, involvement as just a humanitarian one. I, would, I think that's really the best way of describing it. And today being Darfur Day, then I think it's important that consciousness be raised about this situation. The peace talks uh, taking place, uh, 
new Prime Ministers got involved. Are you a bit more optimistic? Isn't it? I certainly am. I mean, it's actually been described by Gordon Brown as a, you know, a humanitarian disaster. And, uh, um, and, and the, there is a minister out there, ha has just been out there, um, who's reasonably optimistic of some action. Yeah. So finally, new album, new tour as well? Yes, always the tour, and uh, because I love to play. Yeah. And um, I'm just pleasing myself, really. But uh, if it didn't have live music, it wouldn't be. It would, the picture wouldn't be, be, be complete. Great. Martin Officer, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very always much. Always a pleasure to see you. And this is.